Hello again. In this video, we will talk about Mustango, a model that aims at generating musical audio via natural language prompts from its users. The model was released less than a month ago by Melichowski and colleagues who are affiliated with the Singapore University of Technology and Design and Queen Mary University. The full title of their paper is Mustango towards controllable text music generation and is currently available as a preprint on archive. This means that the paper has not been yet peer reviewed. Cool. So, what are we going to talk about today? We will cover the model's approach and architecture, and after that, we will use it to generate some music. What is the approach that Mustango takes? First of all, Mustango addresses the need for data consisting of musical audio tracks with corresponding music descriptions in natural language. It does this by introducing the MuseCaps datasets. The reference is at the bottom of this slide, which contains 5,474 audio clips featuring music and text that describes the music split into training and test sets. The Mustango authors refer to these splits as train A and test A. It is worth noting that music caps is in turn a subset of audio set. With music caps in hand, the authors of Mustango use standard MIR techniques to extract the beat information chord progression, key, and tempo from each musical audio example. Through this process, each audio track in music caps can be associated with a text description and also with specific music parameters or features that are captured by the musical audio. The authors of Mustango refer to the resulting splits of this procedure as train B and test B. Why do we use these music parameters? The authors consider these music parameters to be potential control prompts that objectively describe or determine musical features present in the music of an audio track. But adding the music parameters as natural language to the original text descriptions in music caps is not enough. The Mustango authors go a step further and pass all of this information as prompts through GPT to automatically generate more holistic and natural language descriptions of the music. Descriptions that also include information about the musical features. They refer to the resulting dataset as train C. Note that train A, train B, and train C all contain the same audio tracks. It is the text descriptions for each track that are different between these different versions of the training data. Passing the test B descriptions through GPT is irrelevant given the generation approach that the authors take, which we will discuss in a few minutes. Finally, the Mustango authors apply audio augmentation techniques on 3,413 high quality tracks from music caps. This audio augmentation consists on applying audio effects like pitch shifting and time stretching or compressing to the original audio tracks. Here, they also augment the resulting text descriptions with controllable music parameters using GPT as we described before. This yields a final train set with 53,000 tracks, each with a unique text prompt. This dataset is the Music Bench dataset and is a companion release with Mustango. To give you a sense of the type of annotations contained in Music Bench, here is an example prompt or annotation that accompanies an audio example. This one reads A female singer sings this bluesy melody. The song is medium tempo 
with minimal guitar accompaniment and no other instrumentation. The song's medium tempo is very emotional and passionate. The song is a modern pop hit, but with poor audio quality. The key of this song is G minor. The time signature is 3-4. The song goes at 168 beats per minute. The chord progression is in this song, A minor 7, G7, C minor, G major, and A dominant 7. This should also serve to give you a sense of what, what to say in the prompts that you create for Mustango when you go and use it. In summary, the first major element of the Mustango approach consists in generating a large-scale dataset of high-quality audio tracks and corresponding natural language descriptions that include explicit statements about musical features such as key, rhythm, tempo, underlying chord progression, etc. Let's turn to Mustango's architecture. When it comes to the architecture, Mustango has two major components. One is a latent diffusion model, and the other one is a MuNet. Here we will build a good intuition about what they do and how they work. However, to get all the details, please refer to the original Mustango paper and also to the papers that it references with the original architectures that they borrow to build Mustango. There you will find all the details about all of these models. All right, so let's break each of these components down and see how they come together to build Mustango. The latent diffusion model aims at creating a latent audio representation, Z0, using a variational autoencoder, which is borrowed from another model called Audio LDM. Remember from our variational autoencoder lecture in the course that Z0 has enough information to try to reconstruct the audio signal. This variational autoencoder is combined with a diffusion model, which converts the Z0 latent representation into standard Gaussian noise, here depicted in the far right of the figure. From this Gaussian noise, one can reconstruct the latent Z0 vector, here Z0 hat, and decode the audio via the variational autoencoder decoder and a generative adversarial model, or GAN. The MuNet conditions the audio generation using music and text. The MuNet has two auxiliary encoders, encoder B, which encodes beat information, and encoder C, which encodes chords. These two encoders provide a unit model with music-specific embeddings, hence why this is called a MuNet, and are incorporated into the diffusion generation process via multi-head attention layers. During inference, the MuNet also uses the FLAN T5 model, which takes the text caption and the verbalized beat information, such as the timestamps that determine the onset of beats in a rhythm, time one, time two, time three, etc., and the number of beats in a measure, such as two or three. And here it is. In summary, we have the Mustango architecture, which consists of a latent diffusion model that can generate audio, conditioned on musical information that gets processed by a music-informed unit in the generative diffusion process. The language information gets processed by Flan T5 and also by a DeBert, DeBerta model that can specify the location of beats. Now, let's give it a try. The Mustango authors have made available a very handy web interface to use Mustango. So there is no need to use Colab to interact with this model. Just follow this link and you will be on your way. But we will try first together. That link, you will reach this website 
this is a platform called Replicate that allows you to run experiments with models that are uh, preloaded and pre-prepared for you to, to use. In this case, this is the landing page for Mustango and I have clicked on examples so that we can hear some of the examples that are prepared for us. With that, let's go ahead and look at the first one. This one reads, this techno song features a synth lead playing the main melody. This is accompanied by program percussion playing a simple kick focused beat. The hi-hat is accented in an open position on the third and count of every bar. The synth plays the bass part with a voicing that sounds like a cello. This techno song can be played in a club. The chord sequence is, and it says the chord sequence, the beat counts to two. The tempo of this song is 128 beats per minute. The key is G minor. Let's hear. So, and that's what the, that Mustango generated with this text prompt. Now we're going to look at the next one. This one is, this one is unique because this one doesn't have as much music theory detail. Instead, it just gives more like a nat natural language description. So, for example, this one says, this is a new H piece. There is a flute playing the main melody with a lot of staccato, staccato tones. The rhythmic background consists of a medium tempo, electronic drum beat with percussive elements all over the spectrum. There is a playful atmosphere to the piece. This piece can be used in the soundtrack of a children's TV show or an advertisement jingle. Let's hear. All right. And there's other ones. Um, let's focus a little on this one. This one is trying to go into a different domain that is not like electronic music, but tries to resemble folk music. So the prompt alludes to a female voice. It alludes to a tabla percussion. And then it says that there's mostly one chord, um, a different chord in the last bar. It has minimal instruments and it has a storytelling mood. So this song can be played in a village scene in an Indian movie, and the chord sequence is B flat minor, A flat major, and you know, it has a little bit of music theory uh, content. Let's hear it. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and finally, let's look at this one. I think this one is interesting because it tries to uh, generate something made that is maybe more like video game music. It's very colorful music with a piano, harmonica, flute, um, and yeah, let's let's see how it what it sounds like. <laughs> Cool. Now we're going to go in this demo tab and we're going to generate some music with our own prompt. Um, to get started, I just wanted to mention the type of prompt that I've been um, conceiving. And this is for, I, I really like this band from Iceland, uh, Sigur Ross. I've seen them playing live multiple times. And I crafted a prompt for this. Um, try to generate some music that maybe sounds like Civil Rust. Here is the demo tab. <clears throat> In fact, I already uh, generated this output, but I'll show you how to generate it. We'll type the prompt together. So my prompt reads, this post rock song is characterized by drone tones played on an electric guitar using a cello bow. The drums and bass play a slow and steady rhythm of 55 
beats per minute, emphasizing every stroke that the main guitar player makes with the cello bow. The performance is taking place in a very large and reverberant room accompanied by a symphonic orchestra. The harmonic progression is simple and in the key of E major, but very slowly moves between chords. The singer repeats the same phrase with rests between repeats. This music resembles the power of nature in the Arctic region. Let me fix that title. <clears throat> Arctic region. Yeah, so this is the prompt I created. If you have a prompt, then you can click here, run. The model will have to load, will have to run. So it will take maybe like five minutes. In my case, I already pre-generated this for the purposes of this video. And I'm gonna play with you a couple of times so that you can hear and you can judge whether the model got my prompt right or whether my prompt was good. You can also maybe think, well, maybe this part of the prompt Iran should have done differently to really nail it. Let's hear. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you know Sigur Ross, I don't know if you like Sigur Ross, but I think there's many features there that do resemble the type of music that Sigur Ross uh, makes. And I'll play it again. There you have it. I think with this model you can have a lot of fun. Um, you know the website, you also know how the model works, the principles of data be behind it, and also a little bit about its architecture. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you create with this model. It was great meeting you in this course, and I will see you next time. Thank you, Iran. It's been really a pleasure to have you here on the channel. Folks, we reached the end of this journey. If you followed all the videos in the Generative Music AI course, by now you should have a very strong foundation and understanding of generative music, both the theory and the implementation side of it. If you want to get better, my advice to you is to keep experimenting. You should build as many systems as you can in generative music, experimenting with loads of different techniques. Also, keep an eye on the literature because things are advancing very fast in generative music AI. It's been fantastic for me to create all of this course and to guide you through all the different lectures. If you found the generative music AI course useful, please consider subscribing to the Sound of AI channel. Here you'll find a lot of resources on all things at the intersection of artificial intelligence, music, audio, and programming. You can continue the conversation on our The Sound of AI community on Slack. I'll leave you the link to join up in the description box below. That's all for today and for this course. I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.